What's up, dudes and dudes of the internet? My name's Seth, and we are back again for another troll. <laughs> Hi, how y'all doing? Hope you're doing fantastically wonderful. Hope this video makes your day even better, everybody. Just hanging out here in Team Pixel 5 is alive. Yes, if you think this club's dead, you got another thing coming, even though we had to kick a million zillion people out of it because they were inactive and we needed the room. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We're gonna grind a little bit today, as well as answer a couple questions that all of you have been uh, asking me throughout the series up to this point. Uh, you know, it seems like lately it's been a lot more convenient for me to be able to answer a bunch of questions at once rather than doing them all one at a time in individual episodes. And if you didn't already know, can Romulations to Cloud, who just got his maxed out Draconis, which is probably a couple days, uh, if not a day ago by the time this video comes out. Uh, hopefully not, not too far ahead, but either way. So, yeah, anyway, let's just start off by saying that for today, we're going to give away a Wings of Darkest Night and a Pem Bar. So if you want either of them, you're going to have to duke in the like button for me, be subscribed to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section down below, at which point, if you win, Scarlet the Spire will let you know, and then you got to catch me in game, which can be quite difficult, but that's actually related to one of the questions that we've got today. So, uh, first of all, can I get a class gem even if I don't have enough power rank? No, you cannot. You can only end up getting a class gem if you have the power rank because uh, when you go to the Everdark, you have to have the power rank in order to open the chest. I get this question all the time about can I just swap classes over and open the chest without the PR? No, you can't. And if you end up checking out my uh, uh, gem tutorial video, I actually talk about that specifically where if you try to swap classes and cheat the system, they already thought about it, so don't worry. Uh, and then there is also, what's the fastest movement speed with gear? I'm pretty sure I'm rocking that right now. Uh, unless there is an ally that gives it, which I don't really think so. We're actually rocking, where is movement speed? I never, I never go to this menu. Movement speed. Well, with our Raptor Berserker, 117, without 87. So we're pretty much a couple points away from having uh, mount movement speed, just because with the Shadow Hunter, you don't need attack speed. So the fourth stat I go for is movement speed, which is fantastic for using Jub Jub Gonda, because as he creates blocks, it's very difficult to go down into dungeons. So I really like how it works with the Shadow Hunter because we can just run down just as fast as a mount, right? Uh, can you do a video about shortcuts in dungeons? Here's a quick tip for all the dungeons, pretty much everybody. Um, if the dungeon doesn't require you going up, chances are you just have to bomb your way straight down the middle of it. Now, there are certain dungeons, I know there's a boss down there, I don't really care. There's certain dungeons like the giant worm uh, dungeon in the desert biome and stuff like that. There's a couple dungeons like that where uh, the place that you actually bomb down is very close to the start of it, but you just kind of have to experiment with it yourself. Uh, ultimately, though, it usually is just as easy as bomb your way down to the center. Like, that's just kind of how all the dungeons are really designed, uh, including, like, there's that three-star Candoria dungeon, which I don't know if any of you have seen me do that one in quite some time. Um, but you know when you go, well, I guess I can't really explain it because we're not really there. But either way, just bomb your way down to the bottom you usually gets you there. Um, can you do a weekly giveaway? Why would I do that when we've pretty much got daily giveaways, you know? Like, uh, I've thought about having weekly giveaways for mega prizes, but I don't really have mega prizes. Um, if I ended up having something really great, like, you know, something from a Trove of Wonder or something, like maybe a Fortress, an Albert, or another Jub Jub, then most definitely I would make a special video uh, for those to be given away. But I don't have them, so GG. It'd be great if I had something like that for episode 400, but I don't really see that happening. Uh, can you do a video on Ultra Daughter of the Moon without the Shadow Hunter? The reason that I picked that one is because, no, I can't. The Shadow Hunter is my only class that is strong enough to be able to handle those areas. And I, I get that a lot too. Lots of people always ask me ridiculous challenges, which I'm asking for challenges, yes, but you gotta understand that Shadow Hunter is my main, therefore he's the only one that I can actually do most of the late game stuff with. Uh, another thing too, lots of people always ask me is if I can do dungeons without my gems and stuff like that in U9, and it's like, 
No, I can't, because I can't even enter U9. That's not a challenge uh, or anything like that. Sorry to say, everybody, because it's just impossible because that's how Trove works, is it's based on all of the gem system, right? Um, what's your opinion on the current Gunslinger? Is it, in the end, stronger than the Shadowhunter? Probably. Probably. Uh, Neon Ninja, I can hashtag confirm without a doubt, is stronger than the Shadow Hunter because his Shuriken, um, once you end up getting to the end game anyway, and we're talking like way at the end game because ultimately it doesn't really matter. You can play as whatever class you want and who cares because Trove is not a complex game. I thought there was a shadow item for some reason. Trove's not a complex game. Don't let all the freaks in this game try to convince you otherwise. That's why I love this game is because it's not a complicated game like World of Warcraft. You pretty much just focus on the same stats for every character and uh, you can solo with every character in the game. Some of them, of course, are faster at soloing, but a lot of it just has to do with your gems and luck because it's all just on the random generation of what the gems do. Gunslinger, yeah, I would think that in the end he's probably stronger than the Shadow Hunter just because his ultimate is a lot stronger. And the Neon Ninja's right click, Dupless, who's changed his name to Merc now, um, he actually, with his shurikens, does as much damage as I do with my ultimate on the Shadow Hunter, but he can use that ability every time he does three attacks. So he's definitely stronger. Like, that's the thing. Lots of people, for some reason, on the forums are complaining and whining that the Shadow Hunter needs a nerf, but you can tell that those people, and I don't mean any offense by this, but they're noobs. They're not at the end of the game. They just kind of see uh, other people playing with the Shadow Hunter and go, wow, that class is really overpowered. And it's like, no, no, Shadow Hunter still is not as powerful as some of the other classes end up getting in the game, everybody. But either way, that's a long explanation for that one. Uh, can you do a video explaining the video settings and what you find reduces frame rate issues, uh, which everybody calls lag for some reason? Um, I do want to say this. I do have a video on on that uh, a couple things that I just want to say everybody just because this is kind of how YouTube works you can always check links in the description uh, before you end up asking about stuff like that not that I mind like the questions and stuff like that but I see lots of people asking for me to make tutorials on uh, stuff that I already have tutorials on so it's always good to check the description uh, and then also you might want to just go to my raw like video feed uh, just go to my front channel page and click on videos because the way that YouTube works it tries to kind of funnel and uh, uh, show specific videos and even in like don't use your sub feed for YouTube videos because it's extremely unreliable this goes for every YouTube channel not just my own uh, because if I'm spamming your sub feed with too many videos YouTube is going to uh, hide a couple of them from you even though I did actually have them uploaded. So you gotta be careful of that one, everybody. That's just generally how YouTube works. Like I've gotten in the habit because I've been using YouTube so long, even besides my YouTube career, where I just go to my favorite channels and I check on their video feed and I, I don't even use the sub feed because it's actually like really unreliable and stupid. Uh, then there is also, can you put a Facebook message or tweet uh, whenever you get on to grind because it's really difficult to find when you're online. I know everybody, I know about that. I'm trying to get in the habit of tweeting it every single time, but I'm not really like a social media hound yet. Like uh, e e even with Twitter, I had like a garbage account and Facebook too, where I barely ever use them outside of the fact that I'm forcing myself to use them because I know it's a requirement of just being a YouTuber, so I'm trying to start using my Twitter more often. Uh, however, you can always, like, your chances of finding out whether I'm online or not is probably going to be better if you just tweet at me. Um, and I'm not just saying this just to push my Twitter or anything like that, but I respond to my Twitter very often. Like, I can't really respond to any comments on YouTube videos, although I still read them all, uh, thanks to the help of my beautiful fiance, Scarlett, because she helps me out with all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, as far as replying to YouTube comments, uh-uh. There's just way too many of them, sorry to say. Um, then there is also, are you going to do longer episodes now that the summer is growing near and people are out of school? No. The reason that I do the shorter episodes is because of, uh, I kind of lose my attention span when I'm going through Trove and stuff like that. You know, like there's, there's not really much to commentate about with Trove. Uh, and so when I'm just doing like crazy random episodes and stuff like that, I just like to go as crazy and bonkers as I can. Uh, and then I kind of just 
run out of steam hey, within 10 minutes and I got to take a little bit of a break and, you know, kind of relax and stuff like that and then get back to it, right? Uh, unless there's questions like this, like this is something where I can make a longer episode because I actually have something to talk about. Now, I could make longer Trove episodes, but in all honesty, like I keep myself very, very busy as a content creator because I have daily Trove episodes, I have daily Overwatch episodes, uh, and also I try to have uh, Warframe episodes at least twice a week, not to mention Room for experimentation with uh, random side games and stuff like that. You know, like I spend most of my extra time, you wouldn't really think it's that much work, but I spend most of my extra time kind of keeping up with things, you know, kind of checking out games that everybody keeps suggesting, is suggesting uh, whether or not enough of you are actually suggesting it to warrant me playing it. Not to mention just checking out games randomly myself, like that Battle Souls game, which seemed like everybody was pretty into. Uh, might do another video on that, but We'll see. I don't really know if I have the time and I don't really know if I care. Uh, but anyway, then why do people on the Ice Sage go with attack speed? Because the attack speed is a very good stat to have on all of your characters, pretty much except for the Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter is the only one that you don't need attack speed, and you do need attack speed on the Shadow Hunter until you end up getting his class gem ability because it doesn't actually affect his class gem ability, right? Can we? Ah, oh, we didn't get the crit. We're out of potions is why. Like, I was hoping that we would be able to kill this guy, which... Oh, he's got his Gravitron. What was that? Was that a shadow one? Shadow item? Nah. Oh, well. Uh, then there is also... Can you do a guide on how to do shadow towers? I don't really think I'm going to do a guide on that. Maybe I should, just because I'm sure it's probably very confusing for new players. But let's actually do this right now, just because I'm out of potions. Um... In any of the clubs that you're in, you just have to go to, I think it's in the Adventurer's Crafting Table, or is it in the Builder's Crafting Table? It takes like 50 years to <laughs> to get to the stupid, like, go through the dumb loading screen. Um, is it on the Builder's Crafting Table? Portals? Portals? Nope. Uh, maybe it's just on, where is the adventurer's crafting table? There it is. Shadow Tower. So you just go and craft this thing for yourself right here. Uh, and then you, chances are any club that you're in already has these. And then you just go up to it and you have to do it in order where you have to complete Spike Walker in order to do Wakeming Prophet. Unless somebody has invited you to that boss. So that's just pretty much it, everybody. Uh, except another nice tip is that if you go to hard mode, uh, and complete Spike Walker on hard mode, it'll actually complete normal mode Spike Walker for you. So that also applies to doing ultra as well. So you want to do that and get those out of the way. Can you do a video on how to get resources slash ore and how to get it fast? There isn't really a way to get it fast outside of just doing it on ore day, honestly, everybody because uh, there's a couple mods that you can actually check out on Trove Source. There's one of them uh, that's very, very useful and it changes all of the collectible like resources and stuff like that. It makes them like a vibrant green color and changes all of the ore to be vibrant green as well. Uh, no, it's not all the ore, it's just the glacial ore. I don't use this mod because I don't really need resources as much as I used to. Um, but yeah, you can definitely use those mods and visual mods so that you can see all of that stuff easier and collect it much better. But otherwise, yeah, you just kind of like stick to different biomes because certain biomes give more of a certain resource. Like Faye is really good for resources. Uh, Infinium used to be in the volcanic biomes in the underground, but now not so much. However, you can still get lots of ore from the underground of the volcanic biome. Anyways, but either way, that's all the questions that we had built up for now. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I am going to put all of this stuff. I'm going to show you this right here, too, by the way, just if you didn't already know. I have Comments Cove, which I know we haven't been visiting too much, but I still have been putting uh, all of my comments in it. So you take that blue portal that you saw at the hub, look for Comments Cove, which is just right here in the middle. Uh, and then you just come over here and you can check out any of these comments. Uh, like these are all just comments like right here. My Neon Ninja needs love. Please we we rework all classes and stuff like that. That was way back before they kind of rebalanced all the classes and stuff. And in episode 279, I actually answer that question near the end of the video. So you can kind of just go through here and check if there's a question that you have uh, not answered. Or you can always just ask me and, you know, I don't mind repeating uh, answering questions and stuff like that. But either way, thanks for watching. This video was longer, so I hope you're happy about that, everybody. A Duke and the like button for me. I very much appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, share, favorite, sign aura, and stay epic, everybody.